Hi everyone, welcome. This is my review of the Traveler, the latest device by Astro House. I just received my package today. So I'm going to do a quick unboxing and we're going to have a look what's inside and what the Traveler is all about. So I like the packaging. It says uh, free ride on the box. We'll get to that in a minute if you don't know what free ride is. Let's open it up. And there we have it. The Traveler made by Astro House. It was announced two years ago and it was a long wait, but I think it's going to be worth it. Okay, so the Traveler. It seems to be very prone to fingerprints. I'm very sure, but I like the, uh, the glossy cover. To make you understand what the Traveler is, I want to have a look at the Free Ride, which is sort of the big brother of the Traveler. Now, Free Ride was released, I think it was four years ago, and it is a smart typewriter. I've done a review of the Free Ride, you can check it out on YouTube. Uh, make sure to look for the updated review. I've done two, check the updated review, and um, it will go into all the details of the free ride. I'm just going to have a quick look at them and have a comparison so you understand what Traveler is all about. So like I said, the free ride was released as a smart typewriter and that is literally what it is, a smart typewriter. Um, there's nothing else you can do with this device except typing. And some people thought that was weakness. You don't have any apps, you don't have email, you don't have social media, but that is actually by design. It is a major strength of it. I've written several novels on the free ride and I can assure you that um, this is a great, great invention for writers. So now we have the Traveler, which is a compact version of the free ride. Let me start by opening this up. This is the first time actually I'm going to turn it on. And well, at first look, we have the screen and the screen is exactly the same screen as the free ride. There's a tiny little difference. I'm going to get back to that. We have the screen and we have the keyboard. It looks compact, but it is a full size keyboard. And here we have the power button. I'm going to press this and see what happens. So it's, uh, it's booting up for the first time. Um, this takes a minute. Once you have booted up for the first time and uh, you put it in sleep mode, all you have to do is press the power key once and there's no waiting time, there's no booting. It's there, it's ready to go. Now while it's doing its initial boot up, uh, we're going to have a look at these keys over here. And they are the same as the free ride, except they are smaller. So let's start here. We have folder A, B and C, which means you have three different folders that you can put multiple documents into. So, well, you can arrange these uh, as you please. For instance, you could say that folder A is for your private documents, folder B is for the next great novel you're working on and folder C is for your work-related documents. Then we have over here the Wi-Fi keys. We have Wi-Fi off, on and new and well those basically speak for themselves. You can look for a new Wi-Fi connection and you can switch Wi-Fi on or off. And just like the free ride, Wi-Fi is only meant to synchronize your documents to your cloud account and there's nothing else you can do with Wi-Fi. So then, it's time to begin. Push new and new to start your first draft. So we're gonna have a look at that. I press new and new, and there we are, we're ready to go. So like I said, normally when you're done, you can just uh, switch it off or you can close the lid and it will go into sleep mode by itself. And when you're ready, to start typing you just press the power button once it starts up like I said there is no waiting time and you are ready to go okay let's have a look at the screen this is a six inch 
e-ink screen. It is almost the same as the free write. There's one tiny difference. Now, most of you will already know what e-ink is. Um, you will recognize it from devices like your e-reader, Kobo, Kindle, and well, what is the beauty of e-ink? Take your laptop or your PC. They all have LCD screens. Now, LCD screens, they have two major disadvantages. First of all, they have a refresh rate of 50, 60, 70 hertz, I don't know, which means that they constantly flicker 50, 60, 70 times per second. Um, that's not good for your eyes. Second, an LCD screen needs backlight to be visible, to be readable. And the more surrounding light there is, the more backlight you need in order to read from an LCD screen. I think most of you have tried to take your laptop outside in the sun, perhaps even wear sunglasses, you start squinting your eyes, you can't see a damn thing. Now, the beauty of e-ink is that it will take its light, its contrast from its surroundings. So the more light that falls upon the screen, the more readable it becomes. There's one difference with the free write. The free write has backlighting optional. So you can switch that on or off. And that means that when you try to work in the dark, you can simply turn on the backlight and you have uh, light on your screen. The Traveler does not have backlight. So be aware of that if you want to write in the dark. That's not possible. You will have to turn on a lamp. As you can see, the screen is divided into two parts. That is also the same as the free write. You have the large part, which will show the text you're typing. And you can go for three different font sizes. So this is medium. And you can also choose large or small. You can set that in your postbox account, which is linked to your device. Uh, the bottom part, that's uh, a little information screen and you can choose what to show there. Uh, you can uh, choose to have the date. Um, you can set this to a word count, an analog clock, a digital clock. You can have your timer to see how long you've been writing. Or you can switch it off altogether if you don't want any distractions. Then next up we have the keyboard. Like I said, this is a full-size keyboard in a compact device. It feels very nice. It seems that these keys have a certain coating on them. They have a little, uh, call it texture, I don't know. Um, so they're not slippery. They feel very nice. And there's a little difference to the Freeride keyboard. And the Freeride comes with uh, Cherry FX keys. These are mechanical keys and it feels very nice to type on these. Now, you can hear they make a lot of noise. Some people are bugged by that. Personally, I like it. Um, so these are mechanical keys. Um, you can feel them going down. You can press hard, you can press very lightly, it doesn't matter. You only have to press them down for maybe two millimeters and uh, your keystroke is registered. So you can uh, type however you want. This is a very nice keyboard. I have used Freeride for years now and I can assure you that my word count has almost doubled compared to when I was writing on my laptop. The Traveler does not have the same keys as the Freeride, which is obvious because the Traveler is a very compact, thin device and there would simply be no space to have these large mechanical keys. So is this the same keyboard as your laptop? Most likely it isn't. So here is my laptop and this is a very common laptop and this is the keyboard that most people will have on their laptops and it is well, these are these very thin keys. It's a membrane keyboard. So um, between the key you press and the hardware underneath, there's only a very thin uh, rubber membrane that is uh, pressed down. And I don't know about you, but I do not like the tactile feedback of these keys. And also 
this will wear out eventually. Um, I mean, not if you're typing your occasional Facebook message, but if you're a novelist and you write books of 200,000 words, um, this will not last long. Now back to Traveler. These are so-called scissor switch keys. You might think of it as an X and when you press the key, the X is pressed down and up again. Um, you might say that this keyboard is somewhere in between the mechanical keys of the free write and these very thin membrane keys of your laptop. So they made a concession to make this thing as compact as possible, but still you have a keyboard that feels much better than a laptop keyboard. And also for those that do not like the sound of the free write keys, um, these are more silent. So let's make a comparison. This is the free write. And next up we have the traveler, which sounds like this. Here on the side we have a USB-C port that is for charging and you can make a USB connection to um, get to your documents if you don't want to use your cloud account. You can close the lid and there's an update announced that will make sure that once you close the lid it will go into sleep mode so you don't have to use the power button. I still have to download that update. Like I said, I just did the unboxing. So I already have a Postbox account from my good old free ride, and I want to set my traveler up to synchronize with my account. First, let's go into the Wi-Fi settings. So I'm going to press Wi-Fi new and it will start looking for uh, Wi-Fi signals and I'm going to choose the one that I want to use and I'm going to type my password and I'm not going to let you see that of course Wi-Fi connection has been made and now the device is checking the connection to Postbox everything you synchronize on the device will be stored in your Postbox account and from there you can access it uh, via your laptop or your PC and you can download your documents and continue to use them in Word or Scrivener or whichever um, you prefer. And please wait. Yes, we are connected. Press any follow button to get back to writing. Okay. So when I did my updated review on the free write, some people have been asking me why the heck would I pay that much money for a device that can only type. That's insane. These are some books I have written on my free ride. And I have written other books before and I can assure you, I know from years of experience, that once you uh, switch your laptop for your free ride, or perhaps now the traveler, your word count will increase because there are no more distractions. All you have to do is write. Now with free write, it was very easy to switch between the three folders. You could just go from A to B to C with the hard key, the switch on it. Um, I found it a little bit cumbersome to switch between documents inside a folder. Now with Traveler, they've made things a little easier. So let me show you. I'm going to start a new document by pressing new and new. And my screen goes blank and here is a new document. So I'm going to type here, hello, it is raining today. Luckily, I am inside. Okay, so this is another document that I've put in folder number A. And now I want to have a look at the different documents in folder A. Let me put this in the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press and hold folder A and up comes my document manager and it will show all documents inside folder A and I can choose with number one, two, three, etc. which document 
I want to open. And there it is. Another way of navigating through your documents in a single folder is by using a key combo of new and page down. And it will show the documents inside the folder and supposedly by pressing new and page up or page down, you can switch between documents. But I have to be fairly honest, um, this does not yet feel very intuitive. I still have to get the hang of it. Um, so I think I will prefer the document manager just by pressing the folder button. This looks much more convenient and it is definitely better than uh, moving through documents on the old free write. Uh, something that has raised many eyebrows regarding the free write is the fact that you cannot edit your text. You can type, you can use backspace to go back, but there are no cursor keys. You cannot go back into your text and change uh, a mistake you made or something else. And a lot of people didn't understand that particular choice of Astro House. Um, it took me a while to get the hang of it, but once you understand the philosophy of moving forward, it really helps you to make a better first draft. I mean, uh, don't, don't waste any time on tiny mistakes, just move on. With Traveler, they decided to add some very basic editing features. And as you can see, the A, S, D and W, they have cursors, which you can access. And you can do this by using the key combination of new, shift and your cursor. So new, shift and W means that I am going up. So let's say I made a little typo here. I typed a G instead of an H. I'm going to hold new and shift and I'm going to use cursors to move up and to the right until I get to my mistake. I'm going to backspace and replace G with H and then I can move back down to where I was and I can continue typing. Now while testing the device I noticed that uh, there are still some minor uh, errors in the current firmware. As you can see here um, I've done a reboot and somehow the screen turned upside down. Now I'm not worried about this because this is the very first firmware version on the device and every early adopter knows that the first firmware version always has little mistakes, little errors. These will be sorted out. Uh, Freeride has had several firmware updates over the years. Uh, Traveler will receive several firmware updates even before the end of this year and I'm sure that these things will all be sorted out like they always are. So let's say you're still on this very first firmware and once again let me assure you that uh, mistakes in the firmware will be sorted out, I'm very sure of that. And let's say that somehow you get stuck, you get hang up, your device is non-responsive. How in God's name do you reset a device like this? I mean there's no battery that you can take out. Um, well, it's very easy. Just press and hold the power button and hold this for, I think it is 15 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. And if you keep pressing it, then eventually it will start doing a complete reboot. Well, you might ask, how do I get this firmware update once it's there? Well, it's very easy. Um, the second you turn on your Wi-Fi, the device will check for an update and if it's there it will download and it will give you a notification and that notification will be the only distraction you will get on this beautiful device. Um, when it comes to the free write I can easily type for days, five, six days depending on how long I type during one session and this is a first generation free write. I also have a second generation which has a larger battery which lasts even longer. Now with Traveler um, they promise several weeks of battery life. Of course that depends on how long you write on a single day. But um, if, th if this thing lasts only one week 
I'm satisfied. And that means it is a traveler. You can take it on your travel, you can go on vacation and you can ride a week without having to charge. Now, personally, I find that amazing. So what can you do to um, enhance the battery life, to make it last longer? Well, first off, you can switch off Wi-Fi. And by switching off Wi-Fi, it doesn't sync to your cloud, but that doesn't matter because it has onboard storage. Everything you type, even if you don't have a Wi-Fi connection, will be stored onto the device. And once you get home, once you switch on Wi-Fi, it is instantly synchronized. So as a matter of fact, you only have to switch on Wi-Fi after a writing session and then turn it back off and it will make your battery, battery last longer. Um, another thing you could do, if you close the lid or you press the power button once, it goes into sleep out. Now, it's very convenient because when you open up again or you press the power button, there's no waiting time. It will start up and you can start typing. Now, um, how can you make your battery last even longer if you know that you're not going to write for a couple of days, a week, maybe longer? What you can do is turn the device off completely. So no sleep mode, turn it off completely. And you can do that by holding the new button and the power button at the same time for a couple of seconds, release it, and your free write is fully turned off. Now, in this way, it does not use any battery at all. You can leave it for weeks, months, turn it back on, and it is there. Of course, a downside of uh, turning it off completely is that uh, once you want to start typing again, you have to wait for it to boot up, which will take about half a minute. So let's have a look at my laptop because eventually you want to sync your draft onto your laptop or your PC so you can use it further in Word or Scrivener or whichever word processor uh, you like. So you can see my timeline of 2020, previous months where I have used my free write. So this is where you can open your documents and from here you can export them to whichever app you prefer or you can sync them to another cloud service. Also in Postbox, you can access your device settings. And for instance, here you can change the font size on the screen from small to medium or large. You can set your time zone. You can enable a lock screen. And also over here, we have the screen languages. Now, I use English International but you can choose more different languages and there are many of them, as you can see. So this will, of course, not change your physical keyboard, but it will change your keyboard layout. Uh, so you can use the layout that you're used to. Astro House has promised that in a future update, probably before the end of the year, they will add the possibility of importing documents on the traveler. So that would mean that you can uh, start typing on your free ride and you can sync that document onto your traveler and continue there. So that would even be more convenient. So all in all, my first impression of the traveler, first of all, it looks uh, very cool. It's very compact, it is very light, it is easy to take with you when you travel. Looks beautiful. Um, the same e-ink screen as a free ride. The only downside is that it does not come with a backlight. Personally, I do not miss it, but I can understand that some people might. Uh, the keyboard is a little less beautiful than the keyboard of the free ride, but it is still much better than the keyboard I have on my laptop. So I'm very happy with that in this very compact design. Um, like I said, the current firmware still has uh, some minor bugs, but I am not going to bug about these bugs because I know that another firmware update is on its way and these things are always sorted out very nicely. So uh, I don't consider that an issue. Uh, the short keys for switching between documents 
that's still a bit cumbersome, but that might be me, I don't know. But I really love the document manager that they added, a new feature that the Freeride doesn't have. So all in all, I would say the Traveler is a great new addition to the Freeride family. Um, it's a great addition, even if you already have the Freeride. And I'm sure I will be using this a lot. Thanks for watching.